In this video, I will bring you up to speed on the build for what appears to be the world's first optionally manned hydrofoil. I joined the modern world with my first 3D printer, and things start coming together for the manned electric ground effect vehicle subscale test model. Also, this video is brought to you by Brilliant. Have you ever dreamed of skimming over glassy water, even on days when there are all those annoying waves? Have you ever wanted to do that while your craft autonomously takes you where you want to go while enjoying caviar? One day I did, so here we go! To start this off, I used Flow 5 to design some laminar ish foils for the main wing and went with a symmetrical knack of foil on the rear wing. The foil struts were the same foil as the rear wing. The main wing plan form took a few iterations, but this is what I settled on. As seems to be the case with most of my projects lately, this one started at Lowe's. Who knew they would venture into aerospace supplies? Because I'm such an awesome YouTuber, I forgot to film anything on this build until this point had already been reached. So these are at a five degree angle, and then I'm gonna split this foam here so that it can follow this curve. I split the front half of the bottom hull and then relieved the area in between so that the bottom surface could curve and follow the keel. Gorilla Glue was applied and activated. I pulled the halves together with tape and flipped the hull over and weighted everything down with random items in the shop. Extra Gorilla Glue was added for good measure. One side of the front hull was marked and cut free to a shape that seemed like it would have adequate buoyancy and ability to raise the nose as the speed increased. I used the piece I had just cut off to then mark the other side and get identical halves. Chines or other hull modifications can be added later if deemed necessary. And again, due to the overwhelming mastery of my craft, I added the sidewalls of the hull without filming. Basically, I used Gorilla Glue to attach and duct tape to keep everything in place while the glue activated and cured. I demarcated the upper edge of the hull with strips of duct tape and then cut back the excess foam. No special plan here, just whatever looked about right. The bottom of the hull needed to be cleaned up. There was a lot of excess foam and also I needed to get the contours correct. On the front half I have rounded things out a bit as that part should rise out of the water quickly, but the back half and rear end are brought to hard edges to lower the drag hump and encourage effortless transition onto the foils. This should lower the maximum power needed. Next up was fiberglassing the hull. I've been using a lot of West Systems epoxy lately, mostly because that's what my local aircraft spruce has, but wouldn't you know it, it's great for marine projects which so far is all it has been used on. I didn't know what tight weave fiberglass was when I bought it, but it sounded good. However, getting it to wet out with epoxy was next to impossible and going around curves just wasn't going to happen. I ended up removing what I had tried to apply before any damage was done. Then I tossed the roll because it wasn't worth the cardboard it was wrapped around. I didn't want to give anybody else that headache. Plain weave 6 ounce cloth was perfect though and we were back to making progress. Unlike the tight weave, it wetted out quite easily and was able to turn the corners. That became the base layer on the hull. The sections of fiberglass overlapped on all the corners and in addition to doubling up there, an extra strip was applied to each edge and also down the hull center line. So essentially every edge is three times as strong as the flat sections. This should give excellent ding resistance. After that came a finishing 3 ounce layer of fiberglass and then everything was sanded buttery smooth with the orbital sander. Unbeknownst to you, I've been learning SOLIDWORKS over the last year, and it was finally time to start 3D printing things, because frankly that is what all the cool people do, and I was feeling a little behind the times. Oh, they sent you some gummy bears! <laughs> <laughs> I got a Prusa 3D printer, and while I don't have another printer to compare it with, this turned out to be one of the most enjoyable assembly experiences I have ever had. This thing is a virtual Swiss watch of perfection. I expect to see 3D printed parts all up in this channel soon. Once the hole was fiberglassed, I could remove the internal supports to make room for the forthcoming structures. The internal corners were rounded out with some lightweight spackle, and dents from the orbital sander were filled with epoxy and micro balloons. The inside of the rear two-thirds of the hull needed fiberglassing as well, as that will be where I am sitting, reclining against the structure that holds the air props. That's right, I'm going to try out two giant drone motors instead of a water motor. These are the motors I'll be using. These are the Hobbywing X8s. It's the same motor that Daniel and I were using on that giant RC Akranoplan. And these are 30 inch props. These have built in speed controls. Uh, these are FOC speed controls. So they're quite a bit more efficient than your regular brushless motor speed controllers. And then you can mount it on a, I think it's like a 30 millimeter tube. So we'll have two of those. Oh my goodness, is that a wingsuit on the bench? What is a wingsuit doing here? Before going further, I want to talk to you about this video's sponsor, Brilliant. I used to be a dentist who just happened to have a passion for things that fly. When drones started becoming popular around 2010, I became rather obsessed with getting rid of that annoying yaw wobble a lot of flying wings have. I read everything I could and experimented constantly, trying to uncover a solution and by the time the answer presented itself I'd learned so much more than I had intended. Though I could not have foreseen where the passion would lead then, it became the foundation for this channel. What's my point? 
What I do now didn't come through any formal education. It was simply the natural evolution of my passion, facilitated by people much smarter than me providing the information I needed. Brilliant knows this. Brilliant.org is the best place on earth to learn math, science, and computer science. Are those subjects you are passionate about? They have spent years building the best content on the internet in those fields, with engaging, interactive content that helps you grasp the knowledge you want faster than anything out there. Like this course on Formula One cars. I'm going through it right now to help with an upcoming project. Formal education to further your passion may not be in the cards, but in today's world, it may no longer need to be. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash thinkflight, or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Next up, I needed to build the hydrofoil strut mounting structures. This could be done many ways, but I opted for some airfoil-shaped standoffs that would make the foils removable. The electronics would simply plug in when bolting on the foils. Nylock nuts were carefully seated to capture the bolts that will hold the hydrofoils in place. A bevel of epoxy and microballoons was added to the standoff base, and then sanded smooth. A hot wire cut the struts on my trusty spec CNC hot wire cutter, and when assembled they will hold the main wing about 30 inches beneath the hull. So perhaps two foot waves will be tolerated, which is not bad for an eight foot long boat. Hard points were then situated for the bolts to pass through to the whole standoffs. So I put in the first set of hard points on the front hydrofoils and explained to Ulysses everything I was doing, but what I didn't tell him was that he now he had to repeat the exact same thing on the other foil without any help from me. Damn, buddy. It looks good. I had previously ordered up some 5mm square rods that would serve as the spars for the front and rear struts. There would be four rods in each of the three struts. Spar channels needed to be created that would connect the hard points to the spars. Once the foils are given composite skins, this structure will be able to transfer all of the forces from the main and rear wings into the hull. Here you can see one of the 12 strut spars being inserted. After laying down some masking tape to protect the foam, I mixed up some 5-minute epoxy, which isn't ideal, but I don't have all day. The epoxy is poured into the spar slot, and then the spar is pushed in forcefully to squeeze out any excess epoxy, which is then removed with a paper towel. Weights are placed over the spar, and everything is allowed to cure in place. Next up was the main wing and rear wing. The main wing is a somewhat laminar type foil shape I designed in Flow 5. The rear is a symmetrical knack of foil. For the rear wing, I put in a 4x1mm carbon rectangle as a spar cap. After the epoxy set, I then flipped the wing over and made a channel for a 3x3mm carbon square rod to act as the shear web, and capped that with another 4x1mm carbon rectangle. So I mixed up enough 5 minute epoxy to set this all at once, and of course, it was too big of a pot and it set up on me before I could get the spar seated, so that pretty much destroyed that. So here's the new main wing, and we went with the longer setting epoxy. It's like 12 hour epoxy because I only have 5 minute or 12 hour. Nothing in between. So that'll be setting up today, and that's the new main wing. For the main wing, I ran two sets of spars instead of one, and didn't put in a sheer web as the main wing would be supported in two places instead of one. Okay, so this is the main wing, and to me it's a little bit too flexible. So I had a couple more spars left over, and just adding one more spar wouldn't probably make too much of a difference if I did it the same way, so I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to take a 4x1. This is going to be my shear web, and I'm going to drop it in between the spar on the bottom, which is a 3x3, and then I'm going to put this 3x3 over top. So we actually made a proper spar. I can't remember the last time I made a proper spar. A proper I-beam. It's going to be super strong. All of the spars were very slightly recessed from the wing and strut surfaces. So I went back with epoxy and microballoons and filled in over the spars to maintain a good airfoil shape. A stand for the hydrofoil would be needed for further work, so I fiberglassed up some panels that were the shape of the hull. A joining beam was also fiberglassed. This structure was then tacked together with 5-minute epoxy. Spackle was added to the joint to round it out, and more fiberglass was added to tie everything together. I started prepping the stand for paint with primer. I'm actually not completely sure what the paint job on the hydrofoil is going to look like, but of course the stand needs to match the boat. So hopefully I'll figure that out soon enough that I don't have to reprime the stand. I recently had part of the garage floor leveled. It was quite a project. Alright, so they just finished leveling the garage two days ago. You can see everything is still a mess. Uh, the dust made it through the plastic, so I gotta clean that up for the next uh, day or two. Anyways, this is why we leveled the garage. This is a subscale model for an electric ground effect vehicle. 
uh, that will be manned. The manned version will just barely fit in this space here. So we're gonna be testing this out so that we don't have the same mistake as the towable ground effect vehicle, which we couldn't really replicate, but this will be able to replicate as much as we want. This is pretty much it, minus um, it's gonna be a catamaran, so two pontoons and then a place for the pilot. And we're gonna have probably four electric motors across the back. It could be six, could be two, we'll figure that out. So on and off over the next uh, nine months, we'll be working on that, doing project updates interspersed with um, the regular projects. So I hope you're as excited about this project as I am because you're going to be seeing a lot of it.